Can this be our intro? <laughs> Get yourself a hot dog, a couple cold beers, meet me down by the Navy Pier. You're gonna like the way you look, I guarantee it. You know what I mean. Welcome to the Carl Long Show with your host Carl Long and his dude Arena Paul Swan. On today's show, the 2021 schedule. Viva Las Vegas. Austin Dillon comes aboard. We play three things three times. And our special guest, Dylan Hart Jr. And now, a man who puts the O in Long, Carl Long. Oh yeah, Long. And you love to see that because it's Dega week, baby. Buckle your friggin' seatbelts. We have star power up the yin yang today. We've got Dale Earnhardt Jr., Austin Dillon joining us on the show. We're going to be recapping Vegas, Kurt and Kyle Bush action, a little bit of Logano tire rub action. Love to see it. Rest in peace to some belts over there for the three team. You hate to see it. We're going to talk about all that coming up. But first, this time for the time machine. Let's take a trip back for an immediate reaction. Here's Kyle on Vegas. Okay, Monday morning, immediate reaction to Las Vegas. I thought it was an exciting race. There's a lot to be talked about. Logano and Bush getting into one another. Bush won, but the other Bush. So I have questions about the playoff standings, the point system, because I just don't get it. And I can read a million articles, but I'm going to need Paul to explain it to me. Also, what the hell? I didn't recognize Austin Dillon's paint. Explain that to me. Man. You got, you're getting smart in the sport of NASCAR here, Kyle. I like, I like these reactions. I like that you're, you know, dissecting and everything. But, uh, yeah, Kyle, Kyle Busch and Kurt Busch, Kurt winning, that, uh, that hurts us. That hurts Kyle because he was, he was a guy that was towards the bottom. So that is, uh, that's not good for us. And I'll, I'll dive into those point standings and how they work a little later. Austin's paint scheme, I know you were not a fan of it, talking to me Sunday when you saw it and – I got to say, I was a fan of it, man. We brought, we brought the ice to the desert, and we were running tough. We were running good. And then just that belt, that belt issue, man, it wrecked our day. But that's part of the sport, man. I like the paint. It just wasn't something I was used to. And I needed a good explanation, and I got it. Bringing ice to the desert. I like Bring that. ice to the desert. We got to cool it down a little bit. It's Jimmy versus James. Heat versus Lakers. Who you got? Man, Heat versus Lakers, you know, I've rooted for both teams, and I'm sure you have historically, yeah. because I will buy a million jerseys if LeBron James plays for a million teams. Ab I'm going with the Lakers, baby. Absolutely. I love that you love LeBron because I'm a huge LeBron guy, and I'm a, hu I'm a huge MJ guy too. Most people think you got to be one or the other. I love them both. I think what LeBron has done for the game has been awesome. I think what MJ did for – basketball and just sports in general his worldwide phenomenon has been awesome and and it's just like lebron is kind of our generation guy with mj being that old school generation guy but i'm a bucks guy at heart but i love cheering for lebron james sweet home chicago baby don't you want to go to the world series i'll let you take this one kyle big chicago guy yeah, so the prospect of Chicago Cubs, Chicago White Sox World Series uh, looms large in the Windy City. And I remember being on a really shitty football team in that town when the, White, uh, when the Cubs won the World Series. It was 2016. Things were ridiculous in that town. Uh, Chicago is crazy about sports. They're crazy about food. And they're crazy about that big-ass lake. And you know what? Right now, sports in Chicago are good. Bears are 3-0. and It is awesome that there is a prospect of a young White Sox team who has an influx of super talent. I love Tim Anderson. I love their power hitters. And then you look at the Cubs, and they're kind of in their win now because this thing's going to – it's going to be a mass exodus from the north side. So I got to go with the White Sox. They drafted me at a high school – or not high school. I passed high school. I'm 6'6". Six awesome. six, but I went to high school – and uh, they drafted me out of there. Hats off to you. A two-sport draftee. That is a uh, Chicago. And a supermodel. And a, and a supermodel. This handsome Plus stuff. Size. is a super. He's, he's a triple threat. Keeping our three theme going. Week three in the NFL. Who has shocked you the most? Who has shocked me the most? You saw Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson battle it out. Two star talents. What did you think about that game? But I'll give you my thoughts after your comment. 
I mean, I was, I was impressed, man. I, and I did not think it was going to go that way. I thought it was going to be a shootout. And the Chiefs came out and they dominated the game from start to finish. Patrick Mahomes is a, is a transcendent talent, as is Lamar Jackson. But it's just – it's fun watching guys like that. So my grew up playing against Russell Wilson and watching his trajectory has been amazing. He's the first yeah. Hall of Famer. You, and if he wins another Super Bowl, he's in the conversation for a GOAT. Oh, absolutely. And, he's, and I think, you know, obviously he's in the talk for MVP this season, the way he's been playing. I mean, it's – I'd say it's a three-man race right now. Russell – Patrick Mahomes, and you got to throw Aaron Rodgers in there the way he's been playing. The Packers have been playing pretty impressive. Are you ready? The man, the myth, the most popular driver in NASCAR for 15 years, Dale Earnhardt Jr. We are joined by our buddy Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's a master sim racer. I know his Twitter profile says he played a little bit of football and some soccer and things of that nature, but we know him as a wheel man and an all around badass, tremendous dude. Paul and I have been so excited to have you. How you doing, Junior? How we doing, brother? I'm doing great, man. It's great to be able to talk to you guys. Um, just busy, man. Staying busy, working, uh, calling these races, watching a great season, uh, enjoying the playoffs, looking forward to crowning our champion in Phoenix. We've had a lot of uh, discussions here about what we were going to talk about with you. And one thing I wanted to commend you on is your seamless transition into wearing a suit jacket and talking about the sport you love so much because I'm now seeing it being one year removed from the NFL and you're damn good at your job, bro. Man, I appreciate you saying that. I, I really like it. I don't know how uh, – I never, you know, knew what I was going to do when I, once I got done driving. So, I, you know, I didn't have any background in – radio or anything like that so i didn't know if i was good i got up uh, in the booth got to do it a couple times got a couple great encouraging text messages from some friends on how much they enjoyed it and it gave me the confidence to see if uh, maybe i could get a, a, a job so uh it's it's really what the fans want though in the end if they like you you get to stay if they don't like you <laughs> you get replaced so um i'm hanging in there and I love racing, so I just I'm just talking about what I love, and yes. just be just you got to be yourself up there and have that emotion and passion for it. Yeah. So we were talking That's earlier great. today before you came on about some of the changes that are going to be announced this week, and uh, it's exciting. And I think that this uh, some of these things they're going to have quite you know some of the drivers are going to have questions about it a lot of fans are going to have questions about it but i think that for the sport and for guys like me who are just getting into it um and just becoming real fans and being excited by it i think this is a tremendous opportunity what are your thoughts on some of the changes about with some of the circuits well i'm uh i'm looking forward to uh you know a little bit different uh schedule you know i've only been a broadcaster for a couple uh, years, but I've been going on this same circuit for a long time as a driver too. So it's kind of nice when they change it up a little bit. Plus going to some new circuits, some road courses and so forth will be fun. You know, we didn't get everything. I don't, you know, there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions and I got some too, and I didn't get everything I wanted, but um, the way this is structured, we have the ability to continue to change it, to continue to, we're not, we're not locked into these agreements for decade. Yeah. Um, in case, you know, we don't like it or we have another opportunity to go somewhere new um, that we want to try out. So I kind of like to have that flexibility where NASCAR didn't have it before. The dirt stuff, obviously, iRacing is the only time I've ever done any racing. And I understand it's a completely different ball game, the feel, the, the, the vehicle, the tires, all that stuff. What kind of changes do you think we're going to be looking at when they put dirt at Bristol in the spring? I'll, I'll tell you that I'm no expert either. Um, I don't have much dirt background at all. Judging by the truck series having to go to Eldoro, that's going to be where a lot of people go to get information to understand what the trucks, how they're, how they're, how the evolution of the setup in the trucks changed just in the few years that they went to Eldora. They're going to look completely different. They're not going to be lowered to the ground. They're going to be up in the air. They're going to be um, beating and banging and destroying the, 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 not only the exterior of the truck or the car, but the interior as well. That dirt beats the, the crush panels out. And so they'll likely have to have a dedicated dirt chassis uh, that would run at this particular racetrack. It'll be entertaining. 
without a doubt. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, you think you'll get any uh, free salvage race cars in your uh, in your backyard? Out there? Out of the graveyard. Harder and harder to come by some of them cars these days because they're getting trickier and trickier with their with their chassis, and they don't they don't want they think that I'm just going to let somebody come in here and take a look at those chassis and, and take try some to, money from some people. And, hey, yeah, you can, can you come on to my graveyard. I'll let you check it out for a some of these try to learn from some of the things they're doing. So I don't get as many of the stuff as I used to, but there's going to be a handful of guys that have that dirt experience that are going to be licking their chops at that yeah. opportunity at Bristol. And some guys, frank, quite frankly, are going to be miserable. They're right. going to be lost because some of them have zero dirt experience. Now you're going to have all these guys in the, in the, in the cup series trying to go race dirt cars during the week, going to school in the dirt, dirt car somewhere trying to understand the, the basics, the fundamentals of racing on dirt. What are some other tracks and some changes in the schedule that you think are going to make guys a little bit, uh, a little bit maybe wet in their pants in the bad way because they're peeing themselves a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the new road courses added to the racetrack. I say that our guys are getting, are, are getting a lot better at racing on road courses, but when you go to a brand new track, it's much easier trying to understand the fundamentals of getting around an oval. We race ovals all our lives. Yes, they all have different characteristics, transitions, bankings, asphalt textures, and whatnot. But we pretty much can get an understanding of where we need to be and how we need to run that track within maybe a couple hours. But when you go to a road course, um, particularly a place like Road America, which is like four miles long. Fired up um, for that one. It's crazy. If you've never raced there before, even if you watched a lot of TV or raced online on the iRacing, um, you're going to need a lot of time to really get up to speed. With NASCAR's testing policies, the limited practices that we might, like, might be looking at going forward, uh, this could be really challenging uh, to some of these veterans. Veterans don't like to be challenged in this way. You know, change. Yeah, rookies, rookies deal with it because everywhere they go – they're witnessing and experiencing something new. Uh, but veterans don't like change, don't like going to new places. Hell no. Yeah, they want comfort. They want what they know, familiar. What happened to my locker? Why did you move yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so we're, we're going to change uh, gears here. Uh, we're going to talk about Dega because it's, it's everybody's favorite conversation. And with the playoffs looming large for a lot of guys, including a guy in the little picture in picture here on Zoom call. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. What are your thoughts going into Talladega? Who do you like? Who do you not like? Well, um, right off the bat, I'll tell you who I like. Um, the Penske cars are going to be fast. And uh, so Brad Keselowski, Blaney, uh, Logano, I think they'll run well. Denny Hamlin is an excellent plate racer. Um, I don't know exactly how he will approach this race, being as comfortable he, as he is in, in the point system right now. But – you know, I think he can go in there and, 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 you know, go in there and be a guy that can potentially win. You know, I, I, I'm not saying this just because Paul's here, but uh, the, it was frustrating to see what happened to Austin in Vegas. He, he's going to be our underdog hero story. Uh, and, and he was making – he was continuing to write that story – uh, was going to get a top 10 finish, a pretty respectable night, going to be sitting in a great, very good position comfortably in the points going into Talladega. And now he's almost pretty much in a must-win situation. I would assume that they would look at the numbers and go, yeah, we're not out of it new number-wise, number, number wise, but let's just go ahead and, and go with a must-win attitude. That's yeah. not fun to do when you go to Talladega. I think this is a critical, critical race for Austin Dillon. He's won at Daytona in the Daytona 500. We know he can pull out wins in some pretty unique scenarios. Absolutely. Uh, this will be a, this will be a big, big moment for him to try to go out there and make this happen. Um, I think a lot of the other guys, I don't know how they play this. There's some guys that are pretty tight right around the cut line. Obviously they would love to hang out, take care of their car, not put themselves in any trouble and get the good result at the end of the day, but that ain't enough. You have to race hard in the stages and get the stage points. You can't let these other drivers get them and you not. So they're kind of forced, I think, to have to race for those stage points, which is a very, very uncomfortable situation because then you're putting yourself at risk of crashing and not finishing the race and getting the end result that you desperately need as well. 
tough position to be for anybody around the cut line. Uh, it's our third show. We know you are the world's biggest Kyle Long show fan, which is why you're on the show today. Biggest, biggest right supporter we got. All the time. You know, you got to relax, dude. Uh, so we're going with the three theme because it's our uh, third show. And I'm going to ask, give me three fantasy tracks that you would like to see on the circuit, regardless of continent. And I'll give you an example that you can't use. Mine is Monaco. Oh, Monaco. Nice. I want them to reconfigure Atlanta to the old early 90s, or, you know, 1980s Atlanta. Um, so what's the big change there with the, Atlanta? That era? Atlanta used to be two straightaways and two turns, and it was still a mile and a half. It didn't have a dog leg on the front straightaway. Got the, it. Turns, the turns were longer than the straights, which was actually really unique. You're in the turn forever. I'm trying so, to stick to that. I know. So if you go watch any of the old YouTube races at Atlanta in the 80s or the early 90s, it's an amazing racetrack. I would asphalt Bristol. I wouldn't mess with this dirt mess. I wouldn't mm. mess with that con. I'd we get that con out of you. We got the opinion out of you. Got it right? out of him. He doesn't like the dirt. I'd get that concrete out of there. I'd get that. I'd never <laughs> I'd mess with that dirt. And I'd asphalt that racetrack. You're going to asphalt. I'm going to tell I'm telling. I'm telling Marcus Smith right now, Marcus, you're going to asphalt Bristol sometime in your life. You might as well go ahead and do it. it eventually, eventually, he's going to come to his senses, and he's going to put asphalt on it and go, I, why did I wait? I wish I would have did this 20 years ago. Listen to Junior back then. Asphalt Bristol, man. Um, and so let's go, you, let's go international. Let's go somewhere outside of the United States. You said Monaco. I'm going to go – to Bathurst in Australia. Dude, Mount Panorama. That track, to me, is the most frightening racetrack on, on earth. Terrifying, wild racetrack. So, it's the uh, most Aussie shit you can imagine. It is. It is. I drove around it in a rental car, and uh, I think it's the most insane racetrack. Nothing scares me like, like, like Bathurst. How'd that, uh, how'd that rental car make it out of that test drive? We had a van, a minivan, with about eight folk, eight boys in it, and we are all hung over. So we did all right. Oh, I love that. Oh, the speed limit, I'm sure, up there yes. in Australia. <laughs> what about Chicago, right there on the lake, where Soldier Field is? They can use the, you know, the highway right there. They've got beautiful roads, and you can set it up like the North American version of Monaco. And it's pandemic friendly because you got these high rises right there, beautiful lakefront. And you know what? You can't stop these rich guys in their boats. They're going to be out there in their boats, and they're going to have floaties and and partying, and there's going to be all kind of Instagram stories going on. That's what I think should be. I on. love. I love you're set the scene, Kyle. I love it. Yeah, I'm I don't, just saying. I, don't, I can't argue with that at all. I think um, I'd love to see us. Where I'm opposed to putting dirt on top of Bristol, if we're going to go to a dirt race, let's go to a real dirt track. Um, what I do like is the idea of running a street course, which we've never done. I don't know what that's going to look like or what that would look like, but we need to be in Chicago. Um, it's a great it's a market great for city. us. Yeah. yeah, it's a great market for us. I think a street race there would be pretty cool. Thank you so freaking much. Man, you know I'll do anything you need, buddy. It's good to see you, Paul. Really appreciate it, man. I'll be back in the sim racing in the off season with you guys. I'm sure you will. We All miss right, you. Buddy. All right. See you, Junior. See y'all. And for the third episode of the Kyle Long Show, now this. And now it's time to play. The guys do three things three times. Third episode. I'm going to eat this remainder of a pita in three bites. Three up, three about to go down. Mm. A lot of lot of meat in there. Good meat. Peppers, superfoods. And now, friend of Swags and his boss, Dad to Ace. The driver of the number three, Austin Dillon. Dude, that's an awesome intro. You guys got it going on.
<laughs> hey, the first thing that I heard was father to ace, which is the most badass name I've ever heard for a kid. And I think it's so fitting because he is an ace. I've seen him on Instagram. The dude is studly. Yeah, he's uh, he's actually in this room right now with his mom. So I got to be careful what I say. Oh, but wow. He's stud and uh, he's probably already cooler than me as as, uh, as things have gone on. I can I can confirm Ace is cooler than dad. Already, dude? Come on. <laughs> That's all you want to do as a dad is just the next the next line of, of Dylan. You want them to be cooler than you were, right? Like that's all you can ask for. He's definitely gonna learn how to be cool from his pops. His, his pops is a pretty cool guy. A lot of us were watching in Vegas. We saw some of the trouble that you had, and it's one of those things I was thinking in my head. I was like, what if my shoe snapped in a game and they did not have a spare that I could throw on in like 20 seconds? How angry I would be. Describe to me what's going through your head. When you're working your way up there, you're having a night, and then it's like, boys, I got to bring it in. Yeah, it's uh, it's no fun. You know, we're we're doing what we needed to do. We got the stage points in those first two stages, and um, we got a penalty. We were coming from the back, but all was good. Our car was fast enough to kind of make our ground back. I felt like, and um, if we if we had a top ten finish, we were going to be pretty far ahead in points, just the amount of stage points we had gathered. So, um, kind of riding along there and. Uh, went through turns one and two, and it's rough already up there, pretty bumpy. Um, and it hit a bump, and as soon as it hit, it just kind of locked, the steering locked. And I was like, oh, power steering's out. And at that point, I was like, I'm going to have to drive the rest of this race with no power steering, which mentally you can prepare yourself for that. But then the uh, water temp, I've never seen the water temp rise that fast. It was like a geyser coming out of the right front from the um, just overheating. Old and faithful. Yeah, it looked like Old Faithful for sure. Only positive part about it is this coming weekend we got Talladega. Mm -hmm. And if you go into Talladega with a points lead and you try to protect it, I feel like it's really hard. And we're pretty much screwed in points right now. So my, like, motto of, of the week is just going to be, like, go get it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. from the drop green flag, don't mess around. I've, I've raced different ways at Talladega and Daytona. Like, man, like, we're going to ride for a long time and then – try and make it happen at the end and I've, I've had success doing that and I've also had success going for it but I feel like this weekend it's more about putting that three car out front and doing everything we can and if it doesn't play out our way it doesn't play out our way my former team the Chicago Bears AD they're three and oh it's uh, oh, I, third, week, third week of the Kyle Long show you drive the three car you got 33 on the wall behind you for Paul Swan what a jersey you got up there by the way Woo! so what, uh, jersey from Bowling Green, baby. Let's the go Mac. Falcons. Mac the Mac. Nothing like Maction. We got to talk to you about this. Some of the new things featured on the schedule. Spring race in Bristol. It's going to be dirt. Give me your initial reaction. Yeah. So I heard a uh, uh, little birdie told me that this was a possibility about a week ago. And obviously, being a dirt guy, like, I was psyched. And half the people were like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm voting for no matter what be like, that, i'm pumped i'm pumped to see like the rules and how um the cup cars will kind of be i'm sure we're gonna have to do a couple things to to make it work you know the ride heights and um the setup will be crazy i'd imagine yeah we'll we'll be definitely trying to figure out the good thing is i'll, I'll probably call my old dirt crew chief and get a couple tips and and try and work on that because most of the asphalt guys now the engineers they'll be spun out trying to figure out how to make uh, a cup car go on dirt. So super pumped. I'm as new as they come in real life racing. And all I know is the digital version. So the Brickyard's going to be at Indy Road. I'm looking really? forward to learning that track. I've never done it there. So can you give me some insight as to what that's going to be like? Man, I'm bummed. So there's no Brickyard 400 oval. Done. They're going road, baby. They're turning, they're turning left and right. That's a bummer. I hate that. Uh, but, you know, it's a, another road course that I don't know. They ran the Xfinity race there this year. looked pretty good. But uh, I'm sure Roger Penske, he's, he owns the track now. He probably wanted it to be a road course. And um, his cars run pretty good on road courses, so why not? <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> uh, a little, that's a little insider trading right there. Well, you, never, you know, I mean, when you're the guy, you get to make those calls, right? Kind of like yeah. when I'm – Fantasy Football League. You can but carry over true. Patrick Mahomes from the seventh round, you cheat. Blind. You blocked one of my, he blocked one of my trades recently, too. Okay, so 
Paul was like, AD will give you dirt on me, I'm sure. You got to give me something that I can roast Paul about because he acts so cool, but I know he's not that cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Austin's got um, plenty of stories he could tell you. So you know about, like, he loves to – he wears, like, tanning oil. Like, he is a – he'll go sit in the sun and rub this stuff, and it's called Maui Babe. And he puts it all over his body, and it's like this chocolate syrup. Lather me up. Lather me up. And he wears one of those mirror things. In I, love, I love this. I love catching rays, boys. Come on. When Paul set on something, there, I mean, he's very, if you wanted to kill someone, Paul would probably be the easiest person in the world to kill because he's very scheduled. <laughs> and you don't take him out of his schedule. Like, if, if I'm like, hey, man, you want to go golf? Well, I'm supposed to go eat at this time, so I don't know if I can go play golf. I'm like, okay. Um, big schedule guy. Yeah, big schedule guy. And then the story for you. Uh, when he moved into the barn, um, we, we uh, I, I built a pool out I back. Knew this, I told you this one was coming, Kyle. I knew it. And uh, I built this really, like, massive slide, and the slide was badass. And, and Paul decides to, like, he's like, I'm going to ride the bike down the slide. He tells me this, like, midday after we're going to start drinking and hanging out. And, and I'm like, no, you're not going to take that down the slide. Well, he's like, later tonight, I'm going to take it down. <laughs> as I'm walking in the barn, like pull the bike out from behind the barn. And I'm like, no, nah, man, I went and grabbed it. And I threw the bike over this like fence. I'm like, do not go get that bike. We're done with the bike. It's not You're happening. taking a ball away from a dog. I right. Absolutely. Just an obstacle that I got to get through to get the bike back. I go inside, I don't know, grab a beer or something and come back out. And like, he is on top with the bike. He's already gotten it on top of the slide, ready to go. And like, as soon as I open the door, I'm like, no. And he just, decides to go for it well when he goes for it the two wheels like instantly because there's water and the bike doesn't rip on the slick stuff it goes about a foot and they just whip out from under him so he takes and rides the bike all the way down the slide with the pegs gouging into the side of the slide <sighs> all the way down into the pool needless, needless to say i was not happy because i had two scratches on my new slide did and he get the invoice that's the only question no, he just got the trash for a couple months. And he got, like, the bad Paul. Yeah. Bad Paul. Not, not my proudest moment. As, as you can tell, me, me and Austin have been through a lot of great memories. He's one of my best friends. I love the guy. He's like a brother to me. And he, we, we, we know how to have a good time, Kyle. I'll tell you that much. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you coming and doing this, AD. And uh, we're all going to get together soon. Hey, uh, the biggest thing is after we win in Talladega, you got to have me back on. That's all. Absolutely. Bro, done. I'll have to AD, check our schedule. Brother. I'll have to check our schedule. But if you know, if you think <laughs> we mind. got we got a lot of fans, Austin. We got a lot of fans that want to get on the show. I got uh. it. <laughs> Tickets, please. Kyle and Swan read your comments from YouTube. All right, here we go. go first, first up, we got uh from Amanda Shaw. Lose the in sync wannabe. Amanda, come on, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of offended because I'm more of a Backstreet Boys guy, so. I could see that. We'd have to set up what sets them apart, though. They're, they, they all kind of have great hair and I know they do, they do. Lines, bro. I don't know. I just have – I was always a Backstreet Boy, you know, like, I want it that way. Tell me why. You know, that – love it. Love it. I could, I could serenade with that song. Please. Tell me why. Tell okay. me why. My question is this. It comes from 60s Spider-Man. Awesome name. Don't understand it. Very trippy. I'm into it. I'm glad you said last episode the thing about I'm Rob Lowe at a football game with an NFL hat on. So last episode I talked about being a racing fan. And I think 60s Spider-Man is getting into it. I'm relatively new. I've started leaning towards certain drivers and cars. But I just don't see myself ever declaring that I'm a fan of – only one single driver. I just want to see exciting racing all around. Well, 60 Spider-Man, as you'll find out in this show, a lot of exciting racing coming your way. We appreciate your comment. And I like the NSYNC one as well. So 60 Spider-Man and Amanda Shaw, Mr. Pistol even going at you too. Who's the NSYNC that, one? Mr. Pistol's actually my brother, fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, so this, this is from Vince Wall Wallet. Is it just me, or does Kyle look a lot like John Matuzak? Just the saying. Tues. Raider Nation. Guy must have been a big, legendary Raider. 
So I, I looked him up. He was the first overall pick in 1973. At, from Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Ah, I love Oak Creek, Wisconsin. The guy's the guy's a freaking stud. Bro, he honestly kind of looks like my dad. <laughs> Not even gonna lie. We gotta make some phone calls, bro. My, my dad played offensive line for the Wisconsin Badgers. And he looked like that kind of back in his playing days. Your dad scares the hell out of me, bro. <laughs> that could totally pass as my dad. Fun fact and something you probably didn't know, played Sloth from the Goonies. Are you kissing me? He was Sloth. He was, hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Rocky Road, baby. I love it. Well, thank you for your three YouTube questions slash comments. We appreciate it. We look forward to doing more. Make sure you send in yours because Paul and I will answer the ones that we think are most entertaining. We'll answer them all. We love it. Did someone say, Dega, baby? It's Dega, baby. Oh, yeah. Dega! Woo! Can you feel the air? Because I see it, I feel it, and I smell it. It's Dega, baby. Can you feel that thunder rumble beneath your feet? Can you feel that? I wish I could go. I know. Now that just kind of killed me that you can't come because I would love for you to be there. To My spirit lives within your, your chest this weekend, and it's going to just, you're going to grab a tire with a finger and just flick it. I'm not even gonna need to use my body. I can just use my freaking body finger and just die. That's it. It's so juiced up. And we're excited to finish this show out, but first we're gonna give our closing comments. Dega, plate track racing, anything goes. You can't just ride around in the back. Paul, this has been fun. It's our third show. We had your buddy AD, Dale Jr. Yeah, man, next week, episode four, you guys know where to find us on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends about it, share us. We love having fun on this show. We hope you're enjoying it. There's going to be a lot of great stuff coming forward. Thanks for joining, guys. Peace. That's our show. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out past episodes and other bodacious videos. Till then, bye-bye. I had to just give my uh, my agent the, can I call you back? I'm hanging out with Paul Swan right now. And he goes, fine. But you're just one handsome son of a gun. I can make you a star. <laughs> moist than an oyster. That's a great word, moist. The rule of threes, baby. Let's friggin' go, baby. You crushed it, great job.